coin. Hey there, YouTube coin community. It's Dustin with Coin Op, and it's a beautiful day out here in San Antonio, Texas. So I decided I was going to make this video outside. Why not? So today we are going to talk about the joys of shipping. So whether you buy coins online or you sell coins, eventually you're going to deal with shipping. Obviously, if you buy coins, you're going to receive packages. So this video should give you a good idea of what you should expect. But if you sell coins, Hopefully this video will give you a couple little tips and tricks just to help you along the way, keep your customers satisfied, make sure people are getting exactly what it is that they ordered, exactly how it was supposed to be. So, a couple things to keep you going. And the biggest one that I want to mention on, and I have seen this quite a bit, um, more so than you'd actually imagine, I have bought coins online where I have received them either glued or directly taped to a piece of cardboard. Do not, under any circumstances, do this. This is a no-no. If somebody like me gets this coin, I'm not even taking it off of there. I'm shipping it right back to you and I want to refund it. I am leaving you some of the worst feedback ever. Do not do this. Collectors do not want this. This damages a coin, it destroys it. The collector value goes out the window if you do that. Unfortunately, this is just a common coin that I put on there, so not going to hurt this one but if this were a rare coin and I received it and it was taped directly to a piece of cardboard I would be furious don't do that instead a couple things that you can do that will keep the coin nice and secure it'll make it so it doesn't rattle around or make noise like something like this would if you ship that even inside of a package anytime it moves you're gonna hear that especially the sound of silver and that will alert criminals don't ship them like that either but there are a few things we can do so I'm going to show you those right now so a couple things that you can do and this is my favorite this is how I ship them let me take these out of here these things are getting ready to go and I'm just gonna repackage these so when I sell coins what I like to do is I like to put them I'll probably have to cut that too yeah, in a two by two flip now this is just a vinyl little mylar flip these are only made for short-term storage do not long-term store, store coins in them. Some people will cut them in half and get two uses out of them. I typically just use a whole one. But all that I do is I put the coin directly inside of it, close it up, and I take a piece of tape. I don't lose everything first. Take a piece of tape, and all that I do is put it right over the flap. So it won't open up, the coin's not going anywhere. It's nice, it's simple, it's easy. And the other thing that I do is once I have the coins ready to go, I use bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is your friend. Bubble wrap is very inexpensive. Uh, most stores, even Walmart, you can buy big rolls of it. I mean, big rolls of it. It's gonna last you a long time for just a couple bucks. So what I do is I take a small piece of it and I make these little squares that I can open up and just drop the coin directly into it. So once it's in there, then all that I do is take a piece of tape and seal it up just like that now it's not going to open coins not going anywhere it's nice and secure it's got the bubble wrap which will definitely keep it from ever going anywhere and i also do the same with graded coins when i have a nice graded slab coins i always use bubble wrap um, so here is an annex 2010d lincoln cent ms67 first day of issue if i were to have sold this one it would go directly into my bubble wrap. And again, check dropped because I'm outside and not sitting at a table. I'll take a piece of tape, close it up. Now that is nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. The other thing that I do, and you saw it had a package like that, is when I have multiple coins in one order, I put all the two by twos together and then I put a piece of tape over both sides of it. And the reason I do that it's not going anywhere, it's not going to make noise. I put it in my bubble wrap and put it directly into one of my mailers. Now, one of the other things that I like to do when I am putting a coin into a mailer, bubble wrap, well, not a bubble wrap, when I am putting a coin into a mailer, these are bubble mailers. They have basically bubble wrap on the inside, that's also a bubble mailer. I like to take a small piece of cardboard and I put it inside first. 
And the reason that I do that is it keeps the envelope nice and stiff. And then I put my coin in as well. And that also makes it where if you're feeling the package, you can't really tell what it is that's in there. It feels like some weird object. Nobody's gonna just feel that and assume that's a coin. So that's how I like to ship it, and then I seal it up. A lot of times I will put a piece of tape across the back and all the way around the edge just to keep anybody from opening it up or ripping it open. Now, one of the other things, if you sell junk lots of coins or big lots of coins, don't ship them loose like this. Do not put it directly into the bubble mailer like this. There's a very easy way to keep this from making noise. Put them all into a plastic bag like I have here, all the coins that you're, you just sold. Wrap the bag up like this. Take some tape, nice big piece of tape, and wrap it up. You secure it really nice and tight like that, make no noise. So you can put that inside of your bubble wrap and then inside of your bubble mailer and it will not make noise. If people can hear coins clinking together inside of a bubble mailer, they will steal it. It happens all the time. I see it happen left and right all the time. Now the other thing when it comes to shipping your coins, when you are labeling your bubble mailer, I'm going to use this one as an example. This one is from Delania and it was shipped to me. She did this correctly. She put her name and address, which I have blacked out, and my name and my shipping address, which is blacked out. There's nothing else on the package, and that's how you want it to be. If she put Delania coins, well, somebody would see that word coins, and they would know that there's potentially a valuable item in this package, and they'd steal it. Or if it came from a jewelry store, I owned a jewelry store. If it said Delania jewelry, somebody would assume that there's something high dollar in here and they would want to steal that package. So it is best not to put the word coin, jewelry, rare, anything like that, anything that could alert somebody that there is potentially something valuable in that package. Now Delania, speaking of her, actually has a really cool story that just unfolded in the last couple weeks in the Facebook coin op group. So we're going to take a look at that story. Let's check that out. Okay, so a really cool story that has unfolded in the CoinOp group on Facebook over the last few weeks. And this is really just a really cool story. I had to share this one with you. Well, Delania, she had recently, a bunch of months back, had found seven 1995 D uncirculated Lincoln Cent double die up verses, and they're very valuable. They're worth over a thousand dollars a piece. Um, she had these coins featured in multiple magazines. I even showed them in a video. I know Ken Potter did a write up on him. So these coins are kind of famous. Now they are graded, they're in PCGS holders. She did have them graded. Well, during shipping, the coin featured in all the magazines and in my videos got stolen at the post office's distribution center. They stole the whole package. Well, she alerted the coin op group on Facebook. Of course, she called law enforcement and the post office, let everybody know what was going on. But she put a post in the coin op group on Facebook and a bunch of the members decided to jump right on top of that and they started scouring the internet looking for her missing coin. Well, one of the coin op members, Art, Art Ring, he ended up finding the coin in an auction that ended up selling, it did sell, but an eBay auction. So he reported that whole thing. Now the eBayer that was selling stolen merchandise has been removed from eBay and is under investigation, all that fun stuff. But in the meantime, Art was able to find out who the purchaser of the coin was. And it ended up being this gentleman named Barry. Now, Art and Delania contacted Barry and they filled him in on what was going on. Now, Mr. Barry, he had no idea that the coin was stolen or that it once belonged to Delania or it was even in these magazines. Well, as soon as he found out about that, he immediately wanted to return the coin to Delania. And then he came over to the coin op group and joined up and he has made quite a bunch of friends over there. Barry, a huge thank you for doing that. That was really, really, really cool of you. Art. 
just an amazing job tracking down that coin and uh, getting it back into the proper hands. But it just goes to show you that even if you do all the proper things with shipping, these things can happen. And when they do, you want to make sure you keep records of everything. Fortunately, Delania had tracking numbers. She had images. There's magazines the coin was in. There were ways to verify that that was her coin. And it was graded by PCGS. So it was in a third party holder that had a serial number. And we were able to trace that coin by its serial number so there you go that's just a really cool story it did take a few weeks for all of that to happen but she did end up getting her coin back and in the meantime in the coin op group we made some new friends and we also got rid of one of those bad ebayers so all around it's just good news okay in the last video i had showed you images of this coin that was imaged by Heritage Coin Auctions. And I had asked you what type of mint error this is. Now this is a real mint error. So I was curious as to what this mint error is called. Now for those of you who got this right, this is what's referred to as a bonded coin. This is a bonded coin error. And when a bunch of them pile up like that and get bonded together, they actually call it a bonded pile up. But this is a bonded coin error. This is when more than one coins enter the striking chamber and the press, with all the pressure it uses to strike a coin, ends up fusing the coins together. Now this could be just two coins fused together or it could be an entire pile of them. So that is a bonded coin error. So we are now going to take a look at another coin. Now this is an error coin. This is a real error coin. This was imaged by Heritage Coin Auctions and it did sell in one of their auctions. So my question to you is the coin that we are looking at right now. What type of mint error is this? What type of mint error are we looking at? Leave me your answer down below in the comments. If you get it right, I'll definitely let you know. But leave me your comment. Let me know what you think this mint error is. And this is a really cool mint error. I love seeing these. They're just wild looking. But let me know what you think this is down in the comments. And just a friendly reminder, April 13th and 14th, out in Bellingham, Washington, is the annual Bellingham Stamp and Coin Show hosted by the Stampin' Coin Place, which is owned by Tim Rathjen. So if you are in the Washington area in the month of April, make sure you go check out that show. I do know a bunch of YouTubers from some of the other coin channels are going to be out there. I myself am going to try to make it out there. It just all depends on finances this year. So I do hope to see you there. I guess that's about going to wrap it up for us. If you enjoyed this video, do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button. The more that you interact with our channel, the more it encourages YouTube to share our content with more and more people. Leave me a comment. Let me know about that error coin, what you think it is. Leave me a comment down below. If you are not yet subscribed to coin up on YouTube, click on that subscribe button. And while you are at it, click on the notification bell. That way you get notified immediately when we upload new content. Well, everyone, until next time, have fun. Oh.